Hey guys, it's Benny Johnson here and welcome to another iOS development tutorial. In today's episode, we're going to work out how to actually dismiss that keyboard um, so that we can actually see the values that come up. Now, if I go ahead and run this, let's go see our problem that we are currently facing. Now, again, if I click this text field, you can see that the keyboard has popped up and we didn't have to write any code to get actually get that action because it makes sense that the only way to interact with that text field is to actually pop a keyboard up that will allow the user to input information into it. So we didn't have to program that. However, we do have to program when the keyboard is actually going to be dismissed. Now normally you think of a normal iOS application that the keyboard would dismiss itself either when you click outside this window, when you hit the return key or when you potentially hit the submit button. And we're going to program all those actions in but we're going to start with the tap on the back because that's the easiest to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this simulator and I'm going to go over and head over to my storyboard here and I'll just expand this out. Alright, so what we've got here is we've got our loan uh, view and we've also got our investment view. So if we wanted it to actually interact the button to actually interact when the user tapped the background. We're going to add a round rec button, right, to receive that action so it knows when the user has actually tapped the back interface. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this all the way until it hits the, t the little tab bar and hits the side of this view. Now, you may see a problem here. The button is covering up all our other us user interface elements and that's a problem. So, in order to actually get it behind the view, we can actually expand this little play button here and this will open up the view hierarchy and all the UI elements and the order they are. If you can think of Photoshop and how layers work, this is basically the way um, it is shown here represented here. So we've got the button and the button is the topmost element in our view because it is down the bottom, right? And the lowest element is our loan amount, right? So we need to get it to the bottom. So we need to have it on the bottom and all our UI elements on the top of it so we can actually see all those UI elements. So the easiest way to do this is just drag and drop it up the top here and you can see that we now have all our user interface elements on top of that button. But we still have a problem here, it doesn't look that great. You know, you've got your curves here for the button. And how are we going to change that? Well, we just select the button and we go over to the attributes inspector and change the type to a custom. And this will just make the button transparent, right? It will just make it transparent and you can't see the button anymore. So, we've still got a button there, however, you can't see it because it's transparent and we set that property to custom. Now, if you can remember how we hooked up this submit button, we had to write an IB action and everything, and that's exactly what we have to do for that button. So, I'm going to head over to the iBank loan view controller H, and I'm going to add another IB action. And I'm going to call this uh, Dismiss Keyboard. And again, I'm going to statically type the type. So UI button. And end it with a semicolon. Now I'll go over to my .m and I actually add that in. And this is going to be the Smith's keyboard. I don't know why it always adds that extra code there that I always have to delete. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what we're doing. We declared the method here and we declared the scope. Now, what code do we actually have to write to dismiss the keyboard? Now, since the 
text field is the one being interacted. The keyboard is owned by that text field, right? It's activated by that text field and the once the text field is actually tapped, it becomes first responder and this means that any action it becomes kind of the focus for the application. And what we have to do is we have to resign first responder. We have to give that um give that power back to our application instead of it being focused on that hex field. So doing that will actually allow us to dismiss the keyboard. Now it's really simple to do. All we had to do is head over to the iBank loan view controller.m. We interact with the text field, so open square bracket amount and we call the method resign first responder. Right? And we end it with another square bracket and semicolon. That's it. That's all we have to do. That's all the code we have to write to actually get the keyboard to dismiss itself when the back area is tapped. So let's go ahead and run that now. And I'm going to type something in here like a thousand. And I'm going to hit the back. Ah, yes, that's why it's not working. Uh, we forgot to do an important step and I'm just testing you guys. What we forgot to do is actually hook up that button to our IB action, right? So again, select the button, then I'm going to right click the button. I'm going to select the touch up inside which is the tap event that we want to use with our buttons. I'm going to click this little plus sign here and drag it over to our view controller. Remember the view is talking to the controller and I'm going to select the dismiss keyboard IB action there and that will link it up. So now it should work. And I'm going to type again a thousand, I'm going to press the back and you can see that the keyboard actually dismisses itself. Now let's click the submit button and now you can see that our values actually change it says well, I've got three months to pay that value back by it's a 25% interest rate so the, therefore the total payment will be 1062 right well that's that's that view controller but we haven't got our investment working here so I'm going to close that off and I'm going to head over to the investment and do exactly the same thing. Drag a round rack button over. I'm going to expand this right across so it hits edges and the edge of the tab bar. I'm going to move the button right up to the top here and I'm going to change it to custom. I'm going to go back to my investment view controller H and add another IB action and I'm gonna call this dismiss keyboard again I'm gonna statically type the parameter here and end it off with semicolon go over to the dot M and I'll add it here Right, and delete this bit here. Add the scope, and then we want to amount. Ah, we have to do something important here. You know how we've got two text fields. Uh, where are they? We've got two text fields here, right? We've got the investment text field, and we've also got the uh, periods text field. So, what if the user is in one or the other. It doesn't make sense to resign only one. So we have to resign both of them at the same time because we don't know which text field is actually first responder. I suppose there would be a way to do it but uh, it's just easier for us to go investment text field resign first responder and our period text field resign first respond right that's simple now I also said that we actually want our submit 
button to dismiss those keyboards so again it's pretty simple it's the same code so I'm going to head over to the .m file I'm going to go down to the the submit button and first off I'm going to resign I'm going to get that amount text field and resign first responder right and that will resign the keyboard when the submit button is pressed now I'm going to go over and do the same for .m I'm going to go submit and I'm just going to copy and paste this code here because we have to resign both those keyboards now let's go ahead and test this now and I'm going to type here a thousand like ten thousand I'm going to hit submit and you can see that we have this value here and you can see that it's all working so that's about it for today's tutorial we did not implement the return key at the moment but we're going to do that in the next tutorial we got most of it working we got the keyboard dismissing we've got these values working let's go and test the investment so say if I invest thousand dollars for a whole year how much interest am I going to earn I'm going to earn sixty dollars right uh, so yeah that's about it and I'll see you guys later